Hey y'all, welcome to Bookish Realm or welcome back if you've already been here before. So I wanted to have a quick discussion today about a conversation that kind of went viral on X, formerly known as Twitter. I am not typically on X like that and sometimes I get these notifications about things that pop up on Twitter and that's usually the algorithm trying to determine if it's stuff that I... If they think that I will like. And in this one instance, they actually got it right. And so I wanted to kind of give my perspective of the situation as someone who is a librarian and has actually seen these things in action. So while we're here, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me, click the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. And if you're looking for ways to support the channel via Patreon or anything like that, all those links will be down in the description box below. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into this conversation. As I was saying, I got a notification from X about a question that was posed from a user asking that her city council really consider funding a playground to be placed into a library. Now, I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt. I, she's gotten a lot of hate for posing this question and I think that she was coming from a genuine place of wanting a, a space for her kids to play in that was free, accessible, available on the weekends and evenings. And as a parent, I definitely understand where she's coming from. So I'm going to go in with this thinking that she came from good faith and some of the responses were kind of harsh, especially towards children, which I do not agree with, but I wanted to provide you some things to think about and consider in the background of this. Now, I'm not going to get into any particulars about what I've experienced because I always try to keep my actual job, unless it can be generalized, I try to keep it separate from this channel just for a plethora of different reasons. But I have seen something similar like this in my own tenure of being a librarian and let me tell you, it's not as simplistic as people want it to be. And so I'm going to come at it from a couple of different angles and and give you some insight as to how this could impact libraries on the back end because it may look nice on the front end. However, just sharing a couple of examples of things that she's seen across the US and the world does not mean that there hasn't been a thought of thought and consideration and that some of this is not causing stress to the staff. So first of all, I think that this is a great way to continue to have conversations about libraries. It is still um, wonderful to know that we are that third space that people enjoy for free. They enjoy bringing their children there to have fun, to engage with the different programming that we have, whether that's story time, whether that's art-based programs, whether that is the actual collection itself, whether it's hearing guest speakers. I love that people still see libraries as being relevant and that is great. And somebody brought up on X, which I thought was a good point, is that the reason why questions like this come up is because libraries have been so much to so many people and it's our way to stay culturally relevant by providing more than just just like a warehouse for books but we cannot do everything y'all I promise you we don't have the capacity to necessarily do everything um one of the things that a lot of us have seen and this is with or without additional like services tacked on just being in a space in general is the lack of parental supervision and I think that in some people's eyes and I have seen it myself it will increase the lack of parental supervision if you throw a library into the mix. And I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that people feel that libraries are safe spaces, right? Um, it is a way that you can bring your child into a building and you feel that they are not in harm's way. However, most libraries operate in a way in which their staff members are not acting in local parentis. That means that we are not there to supervise or take care of your children in your absence. That is not our job that causes too many issues there's too much legal red tape around stuff like that and I'm not saying that parents go to libraries I'm not working in absolutes and I'm not saying that parents go parents or caregivers go to libraries and just neglect their children that's not what I'm saying because that was also a point of conversation that got brought up on x and that's not always the case but we do see it happen where you have situations where parents go and you know you throw libraries in a mix you have mommy meetups you have playgrounds and then all of a sudden you have these kids using the facility and the parents are nowhere to be found and it can also prevent is present issues of who is going to manage these facilities okay everybody that works in a library is not 
there to work with children. I know that when we think about librarians, we often think children's librarians and then reference librarians are also like another huge group that come up. But at the end of the day, everybody is not there to work with children. They're not trained to work with children. And so if you are going to open up a playground and a library, like who is going to manage this aspect of the facility? Because it is going to be too much on the children's librarian to be able to handle all of this by themselves. They already have so many moving parts to do, whether that's story time, whether that's other programming, whether that is maintaining, managing their uh, their collection, whether that is being a supervisor, there's already a lot there. So are we going to open up another position? Then you have to think about training. I have had an experience where, and I've been trained and I've done like conscious discipline training and all types of stuff to be able to manage children in a library space in a way that is beneficial for everyone. There is a certain way to approach children, to talk to them on their level without crossing boundaries that may make them feel unwanted or scared or uncomfortable. And that's training that libraries would have to pay for, at least in my situation, like that was this very, very specific training. That is also not a cheap training. So our library is going to have to pay for this training? Are they going to have to open up another position for someone who's going to specifically manage this facility? And then on top of that, what are going to be the policies and procedures that are going to have to be written in order to maintain this space? Like what rules and regulations are you going to have when people come into this space and they use a the playground? Like what are you what are you supposed to tell them? And then who is going to develop those rules and, and guidelines or, or procedures? One of the things too is that you don't know and I don't think a lot of people realize that it's sometimes it is difficult to interact in a way that is both comfortable for you and for parents. So for example, I don't mean that this this is probably one of the few times that this has ever happened to me. It's not something that has happened very often. Thank goodness. I'm very happy that it hasn't happened to me often. But I have had a parent who has complained about me talking to their child about using this space in a way that was safe for them, but also fun and engaging because of what I looked like. And it was very clear when they made their complaint that that was the problem. So in that sense, in that regard, like how do you then provide support for the staff members on the back end, especially those who have the potential to deal with microaggressive behavior? I mean, in all of this, librarians are being called out of their name left, right, and center because of book banning and book challenging. Do you want to add something else on to them? Like you already don't trust librarians with your kids in general because of the books that they pick. Are you going to trust them to make sure that your kids are using the facilities in thoughtful, meaningful, and safe ways? And that kind of leads into my next point, which is funding, talking about new positions, talking about training, talking about, you know, providing more opportunities for those who are willing to take on this extra job. Every library system is not funded the same way. And I'm talking about this in a very general way because I do understand that she was asking for her specific area, which to some people were saying that they did have the appropriate funding. But this opens up a broader conversation because she is not the only one that has had this question or has made this request. Funding works very differently for everyone. And with the economy that we're in, as well as book banning and book challenging, leading a lot of boards of libraries to cut funding for libraries, where is this money going to come from? Who is going to provide the appropriate funds for people to not only be trained to how to use this facility, be trained on how to approach and engage with children who are not appropriate, appropriately using the facility, but we're talking about actual structural modifications. If a building is not already equipped to have any type of, you know, playground like facility, how are they going to pay for it? What adjustments are going to have to be made to the building? Are there going to have to be additional structures added to the outside of the building in order to accommodate a structure? That's a lot of money to really consider. And I don't think people realize when it comes to architecture, how much that's going to cost if that's not something that was already built into your uh, your plan for that specific building. And then you have to think about, okay, well, while this building is, is going on or these adjustments are being made, do you have to close down the facility? Is that going to cause a, a limit of access to those in your community? Where are they supposed to go to get access to their books? Is it going to be a noise issue if you keep the facility open? Is it going to disturb the patrons that come into the building? There are a lot of moving pieces and parts to consider whenever we're saying like, oh yeah, you should just add a, you should just add a, you should just add a playground. 
And the end result is always great. And I always say this, that with libraries across the nation, across the globe, things appear magical. Things just kind of happen. But a lot of people don't understand, like any business or any company, you don't know what's happening in the background to bring that stuff to the forefront. And so the people who are having to make these judgment calls, who are having to do the planning, who are having to make the adjustments, they're the ones who are going to take all of the heat if things don't go the way that the community wants it to go, where it's not perfectly planned out, T's cross, I's dotted. They're the ones that are going to have to take on the brunt of the responsibility. And in conversations like that, you should keep those staff members, those workers of the library in mind. And a lot of times it's easy to kind of forget how it's going to impact them. Another thing, when we're talking about funding, libraries like any other organizations have to think about insurance, not only just insurance, like health insurance for their staff, but insurance and lawyers, just in case things do happen and things go left. They have to have a legal team that takes money. When you add a playground to the mix, you run the risk of the possibility of a lawsuit if someone gets gravely injured. Now, I know we like to think the best of humanity. We like to think that people will operate to the best of their ability in the moment of crisis, but you never know. And I'm going to use myself as an example. About 10 years ago, I was T-boned by an 18-wheeler. I could have died that day. I got hit, spun, hit a school bus, and then almost hit a pole on top of that car completely totaled. It was a very, very tragic accident to the point that now I still have a little bit of trauma associated with making left turns. I will continue to go right until I get to the point that I need to get to because I hate making a left turn across traffic now because of that specific accident. I say all this to say that I had a parent sue me because her three children were on the bus at the time of the accident. Now, no one knows if they really saw the accident or not, but they sued me for that and I could have lost my life that day. And so you never know how people are going to act in moments of crisis. And so you have to be prepared that if something was to go left and a child was to severely injure themselves, some parents may say, you know what? It is what it is. It happens. Accident happened. And you have parents who would say, this is a perfect opportunity for me to go ahead and get some money. You don't know. You never know. You just don't know people like that, even though we like to think the best of people. And so you have to have a legal team prepared for this. That is costly. Once again, going back to funding, some people cannot afford to take on that risk. It is too much of a legal risk to put a playground in a library. And once again, I say, I understand the need for this. I understand why people want this to be a thing to happen, right? I understand that. However, it's it's a lot to consider for librarians and libraries in the background to put a playground in a standing facility like it's it's a lot and the last thing that I kind of want to bring up and I'm sure there's a lot of different points but these were kind of like the four major ones that I wanted to particularly focus in on another major point is the fact that you have to have regard for other patrons who are in the library I saw some really really kind of um harmful things in regard to children that I kind of took Personally, as someone who's done nothing but use services their entire library career, where people were saying like, you know, like, screw the kids, F the kids. And I was like, yikes, like, that's not the mentality that we are going with. We don't hate children. Um, and I don't think these people were librarians. I think it was just general people who were kind of like chiming into the conversation. Saying no to this is not about disliking children, okay? Okay. Libraries are there to serve the entire community. They're not there just to serve children. They are not there just to serve adults. If we hyper fixate on one group over the other, we are doing a disservice to our community at large. And so putting a library into, uh, putting a playground into a library, you have to think about how that's going to impact other patrons. I'm not saying that libraries are libraries of like 50 years ago where you walk in and you have a librarian that's telling you shh or be quiet. Like, most libraries don't function like that anymore, okay? They're looked at as collaborative spaces. We encourage dialoguing and people having conversations and kids having fun and just, you know, enjoying this space that is designed specifically for the community. But you also have to think about what happens when people go to playgrounds. When I take my kids to the playground, they're like, you know, it's like no inhibitions. Scream, yell, have fun, run around. Like that's what that space is intended for. You bring that to that space 
there is a chance that it's going to disturb other patrons that are there. You have to find a good balance. I'm not saying that kids can't laugh and have fun with their friends and play, but there has to be some limitations so that everybody can work and cooperate and, and live in this space together. If you're throwing a, a playground in the middle of a library without it being separated from a space, and once again, that goes back to funding, everybody doesn't have the funds to create this separate space where people can go into it and you know yell at their heart's content sometimes it's going to have to be in the same place as other people and so you do have to take into consideration other patrons and I'm not saying like you know one is more important than the other but you have to make a decision that's going to be best for everyone that is included so those are some of the things that I think about in terms of like playgrounds being in libraries I'm particularly in the the group of librarians it's like no we get where your heart is but it's just not a good idea um i i don't really know many librarians who have said yes to this i'm sure there's a handful but a lot of us are kind of like no this is not this is not it this is not going to work for all of us at, at this is just not a good idea and even those that already have those pieces and parts in their libraries talk to the staff and ask them how that's going and a lot of them will tell you not really great all the time it's tough it is hard it is hard and it's it's okay to be considerate of other people but yeah I just wanted to throw my two cents in there y'all let me know how you feel about this in the comments down below and what perspective you're coming from and I'll be back with another video soon all around this empty town we're searching for the lost and found but you don't care 